media platforms display, displayed on the screen. <coughs> we start with finance and economy today as President Mohamed Buhari has directed the Bank of Industry to regard all parts of the country as its theater of business operations, inaugurating the Bank Star 2 building in the central business district of Abuja. The president said the impact of interventions by the financial institution must also be felt across the country. We will bring you details in the subsequent bulletins. To transform legal education in Nigeria, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo advocates development of analytical thinking by problem-solving legal minds. In his message to the Nigerian Bar Association Legal Education Summit, themed Reimagine Legal Education in Nigeria, held at the Afe Babalola University Adu Ekiti, Ekiti State, the Vice President said, Legal education, like many other branches of learning, is designed to evolve and be responsive to the development of society, which goes beyond the traditional four-wall class classroom learning. He called for the adoption of a hybrid approach to education through extensive use of technology for teaching to decongest overpopulated classrooms in law schools across the country. He recommends that Nigeria should learn from nations that have transformed their legal training through developed structures of periodic review and commended the leadership of the NBA for its consistent investment to improve the legal profession, legal education and the advancement of jurisprudence. He also acknowledged the contributions of Chief Afe Babalola for being an undiminished light in the legal profession. Also, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo says the role of women must go beyond merely breaking glass ceilings to attaining global excellence and leadership. He says women must play not just to be represented but to win. At the opening day of the International Women Leadership Conference in Lagos, the Vice President urged women and leadership to strengthen synergy by sharing useful skills to speed up development. The Vice President highlighted the importance of educating the girl child, gender equality in politics and other sectors among other salient issues affecting women. He noted that women breaking glass ceilings in industry and politics is perhaps more important than men doing the same because women who form half of Nigeria's human resources are yet to be fully optimized due to discriminatory practices. The Vice President acknowledged the significant roles of women as heads and chairs of multilateral and multinational organizations, industry, entertainment, technology and innovation, as well as successful business owners. And it's time to join our Lagos Network Center where Hingino is on standby. Hello, it's over to you. It's over to you. Kiuhawa. A new chapter in Nigeria, United States of America's bilateral relations has been opened with the break, groundbreaking ceremony for the world's biggest U.S. Consul General's compound in Lagos. Adeni Itaiwa reports that beyond the gains on the diplomatic front, the $390 million project comes with a lot of economic promises for the two countries. Okay, that story will come to you later. Constitutionally empowered to change unpleasant narratives and tackle emerging societal menace, the media remains a critical partner in the fight against human trafficking. This important role therefore requires redoubling of efforts in adding their voices to the voiceless, including victims of human trafficking in Nigeria. This was re-echoed at a two-day strategic training for Wikimedia editors in Lagos. Diana Ajali reports. Human trafficking is a major challenge to the global community, constituting threat to human lives and national security. It is also a major promoter of crimes. Such organized crime 
therefore require strategic formula in combating it. Stakeholders gathered here believe anyone can be victim of human trafficking. If you know what it takes to move a woman, woman being, to move a human being from like a Nigeria to Italy, you know that it will be very easy for all of us then to come together and counter their efforts. Okay. With participants drawn from states across the country, the training seeks to address the challenges of human trafficking and profile the way forward. The training is actually a very good one. It's been an eye-opener because um, I've seen some of the different ways that um, these people used to recruit persons. Effective collaboration and positive dissemination of information to the public, especially on the social media platforms, which are easily accessible to majority of youth in the country. We serve as a means in covering the menace of human trafficking in the country. For us to, you know, scale up the fight against human trafficking, we need to engage those in the media to be part of those that will help to, you know, give visibility to the fight against trafficking. We need to start from the information that people have. It is the information that will determine the strength and power of, of the people. It is hoped that with frequent awareness campaigns and enlightenment for people to take action. Human trafficking and related crime will be reduced to the barest minimum in Nigeria. In Lagos, Diana Ajale, NTA News. Now back to the story on strengthening bilateral relations between Nigeria and America. And Adeni Tayo will tell us more on that. There is an historic moment in the age-long Nigeria-United States bilateral relations as that ceremony signals the commencement of construction of a new Consul General's compound in Lagos. Designed to replace the old United States Consulate building built in the 1970s, the new facility at the cost of $390 million is a 10-story chancery with accompanying aesthetic features, which has a fusion of Nigeria's rich cultural heritage and America's top-grade architectural and engineering practice. United States Ambassador to Nigeria, Mary Beth Leonard, described the project as a permanent civic monument built on a deep foundation of shared values between the two countries. We want to be able to welcome more Nigerians into our consulate for cultural programs, to enjoy our American corners, to enjoy our Education USA Center, where young people can come in and use our computers for free, have free internet, can research education in the U.S. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sunuru is excited about how the project, granted at the edge of the Atlantic Ocean, will impact the economy of the country and the state with about $100 million in the next five years. This is a different level of technology, of security, of safety. So just about anyone who gets exposed from the local community to this project is going to benefit. When completed, the project is expected to join other projects springing up here to change the economic landscape of Lagos and deepen bilateral relations between Nigeria and the United States. Work starts immediately. From Eco Atlantic City here in Victoria Island, Lagos, Adeni Taiwo, NT News. Time now to head to just for more reports from that zone after a break. But do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, Twitter handle at NTA News Now and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. 157 kilometer Lagos Ibadan Railway is the first double track standard gauge railway to be built in West Africa. The Mobalaji Johnson train station is a masterpiece, an infrastructure that is gradually becoming an iconic building in Lagos State. The modern facilities put the station on a world map of train stations. Likewise, all the new train stations across the country built to world class standards. The train and its convenience is indeed an admirable effort with commendations from Nigerians. This is a station that we have to commend the federal government for putting a beautiful face, empowering us in Lagos State, not only in economic and uh, political arena, 
I can say that I'm really impressed with the infrastructures in place. Kudos to the Minister of Transportation. Kudos to the federal government. Truly, good things are coming out of Nigeria, and the federal government is deserving of all the applause. All the thrills and all the action on Nigeria's biggest dance reality show. Glow Battle of the Year is on NPA every Sunday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. As the world advances, Samuel Adeboiga University, Ogwa Edo State, is poised to deliver world-class education rooted in strong academic traditions. In the colleges of law, basic and applied sciences, humanities, management and social sciences, Samuel Adeboiga University is building the next generation of leaders. Hurry now for 2021-2022 undergraduate and postgraduate admissions into any of our NUC fully accredited programs secure admission today in one of the fastest growing private universities in africa also note that the university runs diploma jupeb part-time and tuition-free programs for more information visit www.sau.edu.ng or call 0705-079-1226 samuel adikboyega university to nurture for discipline and excellence Candidates who are interested in gaining admission into NTA Television College JOS for the 2021-2022 two-year National Innovation Diploma Program are to apply for admission through the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board JAM. The courses available for application include Film and Television Production, Broadcast Journalism and Television Engineering Technology. Such candidates must have a minimum of five O-level credits in relevant subjects including English Language and Mathematics. For more information, please contact NTA Television College, JAWS, or the marketing department of any NTA station nationwide. Registrar, announcer. to nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Welcome to JOS. Plateau State Government says the approval for the establishment of a social transformation council is to create an enabling environment for job and wealth creation. Governor Simon Lalong stated this in JOS in a message to the flag off of the first phase of the Hyperdeck Youth Transformation Program in the state. In the Nyang and Deaba Gang reports. In recognition of the role skills play in socioeconomic development of nations and to tackle issues of youth restiveness, the Plateau State Government, in collaboration with the Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission, is training more than 300 youths in 36 trade areas to reduce unemployment rates in the state. I'm looking forward to learning a lot from here. It's an opportunity given to us, so I'm very opportunate. I'm very happy for it. Governor Simon Lalong, representer, says the program is part of the state government's drive to train 20,000 youths towards self-reliance. As such, is synergizing with both public and private sectors. I'm going to prove that uh, we uh, that three technical schools be established in each of the central zones. If, if the state must, must be a self-reliant state, of course, it will hold on us to lay foundation for technical education. For Hyperdeck, institutionalizing the training is a goal they want to pursue in all their catchment areas for a more productive youth population, even as they ensure the provision of basic social amenities in those areas. Providing them a means of livelihood is more important as equal as providing infrastructure to the communities. 
critical players harp on the need for the youth to exhibit high sense of commitment and determination to excel for national development in jobs in Denyan and the Abagyang NTA News. Plateau State Commissioner of Police, Bartolomeo Onyeka, is assuring core members serving in the state of adequate security. He gave the assurance while addressing them at the orientation camp in Mungu. Ijoma Ozemena has details. Going round with some officials of the NYSC Mangu Orientation Camp, the State Police Commissioner expresses satisfaction with the security architecture provided for the safety of the core members. Addressing the core members, Bartolomeo Nyeka advises them to be security conscious as they proceed to their locations of primary assignment and stay clear of sharp practices that can harm and implicate them. So the essence of this my visit is nothing but to have a comprehensive security assessment of the camp because we are concerned about these our children that are here their safety and their comfort equally is there to us so we cannot just leave them on their own. The police commissioner urges them to be good ambassadors of the core and their families, as well as remain law-abiding through the service year and beyond. State Coordinator of National Youth Service Corps, Caroline Embu, adds that with the presence of the police commissioner, security is guaranteed in the area and whose communities. He's listed here. It's going to also reassure some of them who are thinking of relocating to stay back on the plateau and serve. From Mangu NYSC Camp, Ijoma Ozemena, NTA News. And that's it from Joss. Hawa is back to you in Abuja. Many thanks, Felicia. And it has been sure of love and care by officials of the federal government to the victims of the train attacks. Minister of Transportation Chibuike Rotimi Amechi during a visit to the two hospitals in Kaduna disclosed that the federal government will take care of the victims' medical bills and other necessary support. Oinaya Kaluoka reports. The Minister of Transportation Chibike Rotimi Amechi at the first for Nigerian Army Reference Hospital, interacting with some of the victims who are still struggling with pain and the trauma of their attack, get strong and grateful to tell their stories. They entered matching people. They will match old chairs and then swing themselves. And I saw when they shot pregnant in my presence. Mm -hmm. Here at the 44 Army Reference Hospital in Kaduna, 25 victims were admitted who were affected by the attack. Right now, only seven are remaining. The other ones have been discharged. And some that we also discharged will be followed up in the hospital. So we've told them when they should come back for removal of stitches and to also look at their psychological uh, state. At St. Gerard's Catholic Hospital, out of the 11 patients admitted, 10 have been discharged. Words of encouragement from the minister who thanks the management of the hospitals for their efforts in providing treatment to the patients. The Nigerian local pressure is to liaise with uh, the hospital management and see how much money we can contribute for the treatment of the, of the patients. He said efforts is on to locate the missing passengers from the attack. Construction work for the repairs of the damaged trucks, he says, will commence soon. I'm sure that by the time we finish the repair of the tracks, we should be able to. Uh, we would have gotten approval for the security equipment, and we would also possibly have installed. But if, even, if, even if we don't install, we're working with the Nigerian Air Force, and anytime we are ready to travel, they have, we will have to escort the the train. The visit of the minister, the victims see, rekindled their hope and gratitude to the government. Oyinaya Kalo Oka, NTA News. Meanwhile, the governor of Kaduna State, Nasir Ahmed Arufai, says the establishment of a military base between Rijana and Katari in Kaduna will go a long way in strengthening the security measures along the routes of the Abuja Kaduna train service. The governor said this when he received the Minister of Transportation, 
Chibuike Rotimi Amechi at the government house. Here again is Oinaya Kalu Oka. It was the time to visit to the governor of Kaduna State, Nasru Ahmed Erofai, for the state government's efforts since the train attack occurred. The visit was an opportunity for both parties to rob mines on the best way to provide security along the routes. The army, the air force, the, the, the police on the ground should just go after these people. We know where their camps are, we know where they are, we have their phone numbers, the SSS listens to the conversation there and they give me the reports. I get reports regularly that say that this is about to happen. This is, this is being planned. We know where these people are. Why are we waiting for them to attack and then we respond? Why can't we go after them? We are in a state of war. They need to review the timing of the train movement to exclude evening ride from 6 p.m. was suggested by the governor. The last train from Abuja to Kaduna and the last train from Kaduna to Abuja should leave by 4 o'clock so that it gets to its destination in daylight. That way, if anything is to happen, the response of the security agencies will be in 30 minutes, will be faster. Oyinaya Kalo Oka, NTA News. And back here in Abuja, security agencies have been urged to immediately deploy unnecessary surveillance and monitoring solutions to forestall future terrorist attacks on Nigeria's rail tracks and highways. Discussants on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria today made a plea while reviewing the Abuja Kaduna train attack. Over now to Garba Muhammad Matala. Bullet penetrated and went off with one of my feet, uh, toes. And uh, a lady sitting beside me, too, that same bullet affected her and uh, she died instantly. Yakub Nuhu a survivor of the besieged Abuja Kaduna train, recounting their ordeal. He lamented that the attack, which lasted for nearly one hour 30 minutes, left at least eight people dead and 41 injured while several passengers kidnapped. This is a situation I noticed that could happen in a broad daylight, considering the location of the place and considering the nature of the topography of the place. So something intensive must surely be done. Though the attack was repelled by the Nigerian military, a security expert says other security agencies must live up to expectation in the war against terrorism by collaborating and work with intelligence reports to forestall any kind of security breach. There should be air patrol to be escorting the train to and fro, no matter what is possible. It's, more, it's better than losing so many lives and terrorizing Nigerians. So we should put air patrol in addition to drones. That is the only way you assure Nigerians that will care for their safety. We hope within the next two weeks, everything else has been equal. Uh, the track will be, will be fixed. So I think we are going to start with the present to maybe have instead of these te uh, ten trees we are running, we'll go back to six a day and uh, try to make sure we don't run in the night. For no danger, he says, is a memory lane he never expects anyone to experience and insists that security agencies need to remain committed in the fight against terrorism in the country. In Abuja, Garabu Muhammad Natala, NTA News. We still stand with security matters as to whom much is given, much is expected, the saying goes, as 12 senior ratings have been found qualified to receive the rank of lieutenant in the Nigerian Navy through a presidential concessionary commissioning ceremony which took place at the naval headquarters with a call for more excellence in naval operations. Defense correspondent Najatu Tijani completes the report. <laughs> Rededicating their services to the fatherland in their new roles as officers, these former ratings have just made history as the first to be granted this honor in 66 years of the Nigerian Navy. It is no mean feat as the 12 former master warrant officers would never have reached this rank. Crossed over to Officer Kedar, but for the presidential concession activated by the Chief of the Naval Staff. The Nigerian Navy personnel, sir, exhibits high integrity, 
commitment and positive attributes that portray the Nigerian Navy in good life shall be awarded handsomely. The Nigerian Navy under my watch has marked words with action. Chosen for stellar performance, dedication, and exceptional leadership qualities, these lieutenants in the Nigerian Navy are expected to keep moving full speed ahead, serving as motivation for others to follow. Nedja Atutijani, NTA News. And Adebola is on standby in our Ibadan Network Center with more reports on Nationwide. It's over to you. Hawa, welcome to Ibadan. The need for a paradigm shift that will reposition the police to enhance professionalism and better service delivery has been emphasized. This is the charge of the Deputy Inspector General of Police Southwest Zone, Babatunde Kokumo, during a working visit to Oyo Police Command, LALA Ibadan. Rafia Animashan Badmos has details. <laughs> Do you think officers or the need to make professionalism their watchword at all times, respect people's rights, and be civil with them? The IG Southwest noted that their training, uniforms, and their ammunition were meant to protect the public and should not be used in threatening, assaulting, or extorting money from the citizens. It had that police are peacemakers and the need for them to work within the ambience of law. Nowhere is safe for criminals to stay. We are in Nigeria with the current IGP is in position. We are ready to fight criminals on the lands, ready to fight criminals wherever we find them. The visit featured interactive session with the inspector, Rakan Fahad Keda, and the presentation of plug by CP Ngozi Onodeko to DIG Johnson Babatunde Kukumo. On behalf of the command, in Ibadan, Rofia Animation Badmos, NTA News. Ability. This ability can only be realized if children with special needs are enrolled in schools that will promote their skills and talents. This is the focus of teachers of persons with special needs at a rally in Ibadan, the Oyo State Capital. Shala Wahid has details. The 41st anniversary of special education teachers was organized to educate parents and guardians who have children with special needs on the necessity of taking the children to schools as there is always ability in disability. The dedicated teachers paid a courtesy call on the newly installed Ulubado of Iban land to seek his royal blessings on what they do. We need a kind of a seminar workshop so that we are going to update ourselves in this profession. I want the government to really recognize us and give us priority in time of renumeration to make a renumeration more lucrative. If you have a child living in with disability, you can always take the child to any orphanage home or to the government orphanage home instead of keeping them or, or locking them inside the room. They also visited the State Universal Primary Education Board and the Ministry of Education to stress the need for state and philanthropists to invest in the education of special children to make them integral members of the society. In Ibadan, Lawahid, NTA News. And that's it from Ibado. Kaduna will be our next point of call after these commercials. Stay with us. A new edition of TV Guide is out exclusively with Professor Umar Garba Dambata, Executive Chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. We have unveiled the 622 as a toll free line through which consumers can be able to lodge their complaints. And we have provided, introduced the 112 as a national emergency number. This edition is a compendium of mind-blowing stories for your reading pleasure, ranging from technology, entertainment, economy, media, politics, family, and lots more. Pick up your copy and get abreast with issues and trending features within our space. TV Guide, very incisive, very educative and compelling. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day. 
NTA International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to the STV channel 251, Go TV channel 91, Preview UK channel 264 or you can download www.regiontv.co.uk, Apple, iOS or Android. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. Do you run a breast or cervical cancer service? Are you a private or public laboratory, clinic or hospital that offer any of breast imaging, cervical cancer screening, HPV vaccination or other breast or cervical cancer services? Is your service a primary, secondary or tertiary center located in any part of Nigeria, no matter how remotely located it is? If yes to any of these questions, then subscribe to the OCI Foundation's Savvy Breast app and become accessible and visible to millions of Nigerians. It is all free. To subscribe, just type the Savvy Breast application form on Google or go to the OCI Foundation's page on www.ocifoundation.org and search for server breast application form, complete the form and submit and let millions of Nigerians patronize you all for free. Become part of the OCI Foundation's quest to tackle breast and cervical cancers in Nigeria. And join us I Lipton Models. Wide and thanks for joining us here in Kaduna. Kaduna State has continued to express worries over incessant attacks on communities appealing to federal government to provide military base on flashpoints. Governor Nasser Erufai made a plea while he visited Kaura local government area to commiserate with victims of recent attacks in the area. Umarajingi reports. More than two weeks ago, some communities in Kaura local government area were attacked by a non government killing more than 30 people, among them two military personnel. Governor Nasur Ahmad Erufai visited the area to assess the situation and commiserate with the victims. At the palace of Chief of Kagoro, the state governor denounced the attack, describing it as an act of inhumanity. I believe that the level of uh, terrorism in the northwest and parts of north central require that uh, the federal uh, government sets up a theater command similar to what we have in the northeast. I want to assure our people that the government is doing all it can to put an end to this problem. The chief of Kogoro of Web Bonnet appealed to the state government to provide more adequate security along southern Kaduna axis. The governor also met with traditional rulers and critical stakeholders in the area to promote peace and harmony, as well as creating security consciousness among the people. In Kaduna, Umara Jingi, NTN News. While talking security, officers and men of the Nigerian police force have been urged to discharge their duties and with patriotic dedication as government expedites action to usher in a promising